So first of all, thank you so much for being with us and welcome to the Red Hot Truth. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. It's very exciting. I want to talk about the concept of money circulating and multiplying. So we have discussed that money is energy and energy moves. I, in my own life, have received money and hoarded it, right? Equally, I have paid money and resented it, right? Mm -hmm. And so you said that before that you said, Oh, and the questions that I sent through earlier, you said you were financially free before and you've experienced some medical bills and now no longer financially free. So money ebbs and flows and it circulates. So can you speak to that a little bit? Yes. So money hoarding, um, especially hoarding and resentment, okay, or from my perspective, are kind of um, embedded in the lower frequency of lack. There's almost a subconscious belief that if I if I I, I can't spend it because it won't come back. Okay, it won't regenerate. It won't come back to me. So I lose something. Resentment is I spent it. Now I'm angry that I spent it because it's the same thing because it won't come back. Yes. Right. So we have this fear, this program. And I had this one too. This was big. This for me was familial. Um, my whole family had it. My parents lived through the depression. So they hoarded and, and ho held on to everything. Right. Mm -hmm. But like you say, money is a regenerating energy. It comes, it goes, it comes, it goes. It's not meant to necessarily sit in your bank and never be used. Right. It's meant to be free. Right. So if you're holding on to it, and I see this a lot, not necessarily with money, but with mindset as well. But um, if you're hoarding onto it with that notion of it's not coming back, I'll lose it, right? Then that tells us we still have some issues in our mindset about lack, about not enough, about it's not circulating to me, or I don't know how to make it come back once it goes types of things. That's an indicator that there's some mindset pieces to be looked at regarding that energy of money, right? Now, that energy also transpires over to things like very simple things like um, sharing or giving, the energy of sharing or giving. So, for example, um, I know there's a lot of groups on Facebook, right? You have a lot of lurkers, right? People who don't give, people who don't share for whatever reason, they're always taking, 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 right? Yeah. There's, oops, sorry. There's, um, <laughs> is that the energy? <laughs> I know, right? It's like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> okay. So there's this energy of giving and taking, which is kind of the same of mo with money, giving and taking. It's still that same flow. But when you're out of flow, if you're just a taker, 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 and you don't give, 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 then you're out of balance also. You hold on, you try to take everything that you can to the point where you, you feel like you just want to suck everything in, but you don't release, there's, there's no flow, right? Yes, I just so so that point, if I can just that, interrupt you there, Elizabeth, I find yeah. that most, oh, that's a, that's a fleeting statement. I don't mean most. What I've heard a lot from women is that they say they give, 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 but feel they don't receive. So I feel that uh, often in okay. a spiritual space, people give away the, their services for free or yes. for phone number and don't open up to receive. So it's almost the opposite. So yes. And that's, that's the other side of the coin. And that's more of the divine feminine that you're talking about. Right. So there's also, there is both sides, right? There's the give and then there's the take. Now there's a lot of takers. Um, even women, there are a lot of takers who yeah. don't want to pay. Right. And then there's the givers. Now the givers from my experience, um, usually, give everything for a couple of reasons, right? Number one, insecurity, lack of confidence, doubt, but also to be uh, liked, loved, or accepted, right? 
And some of those patterns are not necessarily um, healer or coach related. They're women related. Yes. They're divine feminine related, right? We, we step into these roles that were already on the planet that said, we're caretakers. We take care of our families. We take care of our aging parents. We take care of our children. We take care, which usually means we give, 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 give. And what happens is a lot of people give to the point where they actually make themselves sick, mm-hmm. right? Because they're draining all of this energy. And it's kind of like life force is coming in and it's going right out, right? So with those types of things, you really have to be able to hold your boundaries to know when to give and to know when to say no. And that's another big thing. A lot of times we don't know when to say no, right? We allow, thank you. We allow all these people to come into our, into our messages, into Facebook. And especially if you're a healer, oh, I saw your post. Here's my life story. Do you get anything from it? right? The first thing you should, you should say to someone like that is, okay. yes, we can, we can explore a ton of this. Go here and book my appointment, you know, book an appointment for yourself, right? But there's so many people who really just genuinely want to help. But to the point of number one, if you're doing it in that way and not being compensated for it, the other person isn't going to value it. They're just going to take, this is the taker. They're just going to take, 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 take. They're going to take from you to the point where you are so emotionally, mentally, energetically drained that you can't do your job for that $275 person who do, does want to pay you because you got nothing left. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like really holding boundaries, especially if you're in business. Yeah. Especially when business, and I've um, experienced that too, when I was running my own life coaching company, it was um, the same thing. There were always those people who wanted free advice. And, you know, I, I, I love giving advice. Like I love, um, I love sharing knowledge. Let me put it that way, because Mm -hmm. I love seeing that light in someone's eyes. And then also I had to learn that, you know, I spent so long, so many hours, so many years learning this and honing my skill and really the amount of work I've put in just to give it away is just not okay. And what I realized, I mean, we all know this, right? When I start valuing myself and my skill, others start valuing it too. And that's the same with money. 